Good evening, Cover Drive. Good evening. Hey. Long time. Long time, for real. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. We're happy to be back, so thanks for having me. Yeah. It's good to see you all back again, you know. It's good to see all the members back here again and, you know. It's like a family reunion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Do you feel like, this may sound a bit left field, do you feel like the UK is your strongest market? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, the UK, not only just as a market, but it actually feels like a home away from home. Mm -hmm. I think because we spent so much time here and we released our music here before anywhere else. And we've just had such a strong fan base here. I think that when, whenever we come back, we always feel that love and support. And sometimes we're not really sure if it's still going to be there because we've been gone for so long. Mm -hmm. Yet it always is, and so I definitely say for us, the UK is our home away from home and our um, most supportive fan base. I think mm -hmm. is in the is in the UK. Let me ask you guys all individually, mm -hmm. um, what has been your best experience um, perform performing or touring within the UK? So it's not uh, okay. Um, best perform well experience would be we did a show. Uh, our last show opening up for Kelly Clarkson this, yeah. was um, probably my f one of my favorite gigs ever. It was the most responsive crowd. Everything went well on stage, and we got to meet Kelly Clarkson afterwards. She's a sweetheart, and I think that that was just like the most fun I've had on stage in a long time. You know, I think um, my favorite experience when it comes to playing in London, or when we used to play in London more often, was just hearing, well, one hearing your songs being sung back to you. But also feeling the happiness of the audience because you know we make feel-good music and our fans connect with our music and it makes them happy so and when they sing it back you feel the happiness in their voices so it makes you feel even more alive on stage yeah I definitely will agree with Tiri like seeing the impacts of our music on an audience is because you know you love your music and it means so much to you and it makes you feel a certain way mm. but actually seeing the impact it can have on <coughs> another human being and um, the togetherness it kind of creates in an, in a, in an environment. That's definitely a, a, something I love. And um, my most recent favorite memory is actually one from this trip. Because um, we've been gone as a band for like two years. We haven't been here um, as a group. And we played a show at Queen Mary University recently. And it was, we didn't know quite what to expect because we've been gone for so long. Yet everybody sang every song back, right back at us. and. They were just as enthusiastic as when we left, so um, I think that's definitely one of my new favorite memories. Yeah, that w that one's really good, actually. Um, my favorite memory probably would be um, the day the day that we played Summertime Ball. Uh, we played eighty thousand people, and then directly after that, we played a gig for Nando's, and we got a black card as well. So, <laughs> so that was. The black card. The black card. Do you have it on you? I don't have it on me. Tira has it. Tira usually holds it. Tira is the one who monopolizes the black card. He won't let anyone else touch it. Tira, you, listen, Look. you're going to be hot in London now that people know you got the black card. <laughs> hey, man, hey, man. Look, it's been expired, unfortunately. <laughs> so I don't care it on me anymore. I want to talk to you guys about culture. Um, mm -hmm. You know, um, one thing I've always felt impressed by you guys is that you've always you brought your culture over here. Um, do you feel it's important to represent Barbados to, to the world because you guys are very well known we know about the other Bayesian artists are doing well so how important do you feel culture is in music and spreading that worldwide? Um, I think it's extremely important at least for us it really is um, I don't know na just naturally I guess being four friends from Barbados we just wanted to kind of make the music we made authentic mm -hmm. and that kind of just naturally meant that we were gonna have influences from home and have, um, mm -hmm. you know, have the ba represent Barbados, and I had to think that um, it wasn't a conscious decision. Like, oh my gosh, we're, this is gonna be our marketing strategy. This is gonna be Barbados. I just think it's who we are and it's where we're from, and we try to be as true to ourselves as possible in our music, and that comes through. And um, Barbados is an important part of of, mm -hmm. of that, so it comes out. What's that, what's it like when you go back home? You know, do you are you guys? Cause are you more popular outside of Barbados or in your country? So it's it's weird because mm -hmm. um, actually we when we when we came to the UK, we actually just basically left from T Ray's basement mm -hmm. and we came straight to the UK. So when we were working on our, our first album and we released our first album here in the UK, no one in Barbados really knew who we were initially. 
they were like, well, who, who are these kids? They're from Barbados. What's this? No, they, because we never played shows there or anything. We just kind of went from the basement to, to London. And um, we had a lot of success here in London. So initially, our full, like, you know, the full support was coming from the UK and mm -hmm. London initially. But then as Bayesian started to realize that we were from Barbados, um, we realized that we had this really strong support system back home. And I think the day we noticed that, we, we fully felt that, was we flew home um, after the Kelly Clarkson tour. Mm -hmm. And we had a show at the Prime Minister's house. And um, it was called a Shine Concert. It was a charity concert that we were doing. And um, 5,000 people came out in the rain. And Bayesians hate rain. They came out in the rain and waited for us to perform. And when we performed, I, there's, I tell you, no lie, when I tell you every single person was singing, and everybody, everybody was together, people from the age of five, even like five-year-olds, 15-year-olds, 25-year-olds, 30-year-olds, 60-year-olds, 10-year-olds, I mean, everyone. Ent entire families. Entire yeah, families sure. of generations yeah. were there. <laughs> and um, I think that's one of the biggest blessings, I think, for what we do is like to see that togetherness and that our music can have people from all walks of life mm -hmm. together and enjoying a show and that was the day that we really felt that support from Barbados so I think that um, we now definitely know Barbados has um, our, our back mm -hmm. but definitely we feel it in the UK because we started in the UK mm -hmm. so yeah that's interesting um, did you guys I think did you put a picture up on Instagram or a while ago when you did that shine so yeah. yeah, when we did that mm. concert, yeah. probably there was in twenty thirteen, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, it was, it was that was one of my favorite shows. So yeah. it was so good. What was it? So straight after you come off stage, how do you guys really feel when you come off stage? Like that experience, it must have been amazing. You're, exhi the, you're exhilarated. The best yeah. feeling. You're ever. Exhilarated. I mean, just adrenaline rush. Yeah, definitely. because leading up to the show, we did a schools tour, and we didn't, as Amanda said earlier, since we started in the UK, we didn't really know what to expect when it came to how people would receive us when we came to their schools. And we'd go there, and I mean, we had to hire security. It, it was, was crazy. It was girls stampeding towards like, you and everything. Pinned against walls. <laughs> it it was a crazy experience. And then after the show, after everyone's singing to you, it's just like wow. It's such a great feeling to ha to know that your island has your back. Yeah, it was honestly like one of the most rewarding shows yeah. we've done, and I think that that's just literally it. Knowing home, knowing that home supports you gives you a whole like it, it fuels you i think mm -hmm. and so for us that was definitely when we came off stage it was like i said it's one of our favorite shows that we've done it was just a great feeling so for, for now you guys mainly based in the states mm -hmm. yes. yeah what's that adjustment been like for you guys um well so we're based in the states right now um because we're doing this u.s college tour so in the past 18 months we've um played over 105 shows at 105 different colleges 34 different states and driven over 44,000 miles and so we're based in the states because it just makes sense to be there yeah. while we're doing all this touring um, it's very different to the UK um, the tour it's like just just the tour alone is very different because it's um, imagine like we're a band that no one really knows in the states we never release music over there it's um, we're kind of like hustling on the road grinding all squeezed into like a little Avalon we do all the driving ourselves mm -hmm. And um, sometimes we play, we never know what kind of show to expect. Here in the UK, we have a show and people know the song, so people are gonna come out, people are gonna sing. But when we're playing these shows, we have, we have no idea what the crowd's gonna be like. We don't know if they know anything about us or whatever. Sometimes we get shows with hundreds of people and even if they don't know it, it's like great and festival style. And sometimes you get shows with like 10 people who are not interested in hearing a band at all. And, it, and but you have to figure out how to win them over. Mm -hmm. And for us, that's it's been probably the most um, the most beneficial tour in terms of growth, mm -hmm. because it's really taught us how to grow as a band and grow as an artist and be able to adapt and change and your set to to captivate any audience. And that's something that we ne didn't necessarily have to do here because we were blessed enough to like already have an audience that mm -hmm. was engaged. And um, I think it's. We're, we're really glad we've gone back and done this kind of tour because it's, I, I believe, an important part of the foundation of any band to be able to do like a grueling tour and do a tour that is, um, that makes you work. Like you have to work for the, for the, for the love of the audience. Mm -hmm. And I, for us, it's been, I mean, a band changing tour. I, I went on a tour the other day um, and I was doing tour managing 
Listen, so when you're saying that tour life, yeah, whoo, it's, it's rough. It, it's, it, we it's drove, I mean, one like we yeah. had a show once in Texas and we were in Maryland and we had a day to drive 20 hours, yeah. play a show, and, and then drive like 20 hours the back. back. We did that. Like that's that's what we do. We we mm. really work hard at it. Like uh, you know, it's important to us. We're on the road and we want to share our music. We want to build our fan base. And when you're an independent act, you don't necessarily have all the luxuries of a label doing things for you. And part of that means that then you have to hit the road. You have to like suck it up, drive those twenty hours. You know, eat nuts in the car. Lose, <laughs> you lose feeling in your legs. Hate each other for a good ten of those hours. Um, <laughs> and yeah, well, we do it because we love it. When there's a problem on a tour or a challenge, who's the person who has to solve it for the most part? I don't I think, think there's one person. There's not really it, one yeah, person. Yeah, it depends on the problem yeah. too. Um, it does. I mean, ultimately, we always fall back on our management. Yeah, like if and we if we can't decide on something, we'll call her up. We'll always, like, she'll always diffuse situation, put things in perspective, give yeah. everything a context. But when we can't reach her... We rock, paper, scissors. We rock, paper, scissors. Yes. I know it seems ridiculous, it's, but it's it, actually sometimes the only way you can settle. It's the most district. neutral way to do something. Yeah. 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 So um, sometimes we do best of three. If it's like a dire, <laughs> like we do best of three rock, paper, scissors. If it's like a dire situation, we'll just do it once and whoever wins, wins. Um, yeah, that's how we try to handle things <laughs> diplomatically. That doesn't always work, though. I remember two of you guys were trying to decide on something. So like rock, paper, scissors. And they literally... Uh, drew right. the for same 10 thing. times in a row. <laughs> yeah. The same, I remember same. that. We drew yeah. 10 times in a row. We need to find another way to yeah, no. <laughs> Like, I guess when you spent, you live with someone for five years, you know them so well, you know what they're going to do every time. So we yeah. were like, we yep. can, yeah. But that usually it works though. Let me ask this then, but it must, this is, must have really matured you guys. Oh, you know, right. It had yeah. to. It had to. Especially, I, sorry, coach no, up. As Amanda said, especially where you come from, well, experience in the UK and your songs being sung back to you and having and already having an audience that appreciates your music and then going to a place that where no one knows you and they don't necessarily want to hear you. I mean, oh, sorry, Americans can be quite. They can blunt. be. They can be brutal. Yeah. 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 They can be brutal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It humbles you. It humbles you and forces you to grow up and not because the easy way to think the easy thing to do is just like, oh man, well you know what, I'm uh, just leaving. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I think it takes strength to be performing your heart out to people that don't know you and seeing people get up and leave and not become discouraged by that. Yeah, and I think that also there is a point on the tour like where we realized that we now had gone to a point where we could not just play in front of an audience that wasn't engaged, but play in front of them and change their opinion of yeah. this mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's a, that was such an empowering moment for us as a band. Like, I don't think there's any audience now that's daunting, going to be going to daunt that us. I feel like I feel like we could play anywhere, and it's a great feeling for a band to have, I think. Um, yeah. So we've seen the in-house, all everything. Oh, yeah, and you, by the way, you were talking about, sorry, I forgot, no. you were talking about, um, about immaturing us. Mm-hmm. And I would say 100%, um, you have, it's almost like you have no choice but to grow up and how we've lived, how we've experienced it. You know, we, we were, up until the point that we split with our label, we had been a label-based band, basically, mm-hmm. for the most of, Correct, our, of yeah. our band life. Because it was only a few months after we started the band that we had, you know, gotten signed, and then we were a label but for most of it. So when we became independent, at first it threw us because we didn't really know what that meant. Like, what does it mean to be an independent band? Mm-hmm. Like, how do you navigate the independent? How do you do it? And it took us a while. And what it forced us to do, which is a great thing, but it was difficult, was to become a very self-sufficient unit, to grow up as individuals and to grow up as a band. And when I say that, I mean in terms of not relying on other people to do things for you. So for us, that meant <coughs> learning to produce our own records. So the whole album, the second album, which is great, I can't wait for you guys to hear it, the whole second album is produced by T. Ray and Barry. Mm-hmm. It's written by me, manager, our, our manager, and um, some of other writers that we have in our kind of team, our little Bayesian team that we have. And most of the videos that you will see, if not all of them, are done by Jamar. And so those are things that we were never doing. Well, the production we and the doing, videos. But it wasn't onto the scale. No, on the yeah, scale, we were not never the doing them on the scale that we are doing them now. And so yeah. that definitely was for us, like, growing up and maturing and 
learning to take responsibility for not just one aspect of our of our craft and our business but all of it exactly and um not only even down to you know manage tour man like hitting the road like on the road here in the uk with a label you know they're gonna pay for a tour mm -hmm. manager they're gonna pay for roadies they're gonna pay for your engineers and then we had to just say we want to hit the road mm -hmm. do we you know what do we do it's do it ourselves so it's engineering on barry it's us splitting the 20 hour drive you know it's all that stuff it's being responsible with our budgets on this road and like so all of those things have forced us to grow up and I think it shows in our music. I think you get that journey from the new mm -hmm. album. But you also we still this is what Grapefruit Perrier basically is about is saying. It's saying that despite all of those trials and tribulations, we choose to find joy and feel good even in the smaller things in life and also the little achievements. And um so for us our music still feels good and mm -hmm. we still want our music to make people feel good we're not gonna go put out a jaded record like <laughs> i hate everything life is terrible because that's not how we feel about the situation mm -hmm. honestly we don't feel that way we feel like while initially it was hard it was a blessing in disguise and it was mm -hmm. it was a hard disguise but it was a blessing and we feel good about it we feel good about where we've come and we um are looking forward to what comes next we don't know what that would be it could involve a label it could be that we remain independent whatever it is we just embrace it and we enjoy life and i think that comes through in the album as well Can I, I wanted to touch on a part of like you know the actual split not in specifics but as you said there's a point where things are done for you there's, there's things in place all you gotta do is turn up yeah mm -hmm. and it's already yeah. there the first week or so after the label split was there any doubts of thinking that I don't know. We can still do this. Well, I don't think it was just a week, honestly. I it think was, it was like a, it was yeah. like a good, like a few months. It was like a good months. six month period right. because period like after that. the after the split, I think a week after we mm -hmm. were we were still we in were, the UK, yeah, yeah, still trying to process things. And then you go back home, and while you're still processing, and you know little rumors are going around and everything, and people who know you to be signed are they asking like, well, why are you back in Barbados? What yeah. is, what does that mean? And the thing is, like, there's you have to be able to work through the noise of it all yeah. and come to a place where you figure out what it means for you so for us it was like you know there was noise people who don't understand the industry and understand what it's like to be a signed artist and to be an independent artist they think that being a musician is defined by being on a label yeah. mm -hmm. and for us we had all that noise in our heads like well you guys can't be a serious band anymore because you know and then it's like there came to the point where we realized no you know we're musicians first and foremost before anything the label didn't create this band we were a band before we were musicians individually before we even met each other mm -hmm. music is part of who we are it's part of a gift and it's a gift that can't be taken away by any man or company and so for us we um once we came to that realization then it didn't the noise didn't matter anymore and it was just about well what are we going to do next um to keep going on this journey that we're on because like any career, a journey has its ups and downs, and the music industry is no different. It's a career, and we want to build a career as a band, and so we just embraced what where the position we were in, and then just started moving forward from there. Because I know these things affect people differently, you know. Like Neil would know as well. Like the amount of people that get that on a major situation, they're off it, and they're not able to bounce back. Right. But yeah. you yeah. guys have bounced back, done a more grueling tour than you did. Well, yeah, we've done more touring than we did while we were with the label. Yeah. So it, it shows a certain component of DNA that you guys have that not many people would even bother with. Like that, like, I know the, those school tours. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there, there isn't even a change room sometimes. No. Like, designed no. for like you're like where it's not there. Oh man, you know? the places I have had to change. <laughs> you don't even want to know. Okay. The places you know? we have played. <laughs> the we have played. Hotels we have stayed in. The hotel situation. Oh. I mean, we got to a point where we got this hotel and it was like, we walked in and it was like, look, dude, there's only so much we can take. Like, this is just <laughs> another level. Yeah, like, but the thing that always gets us through is that the love for music. Yeah. It's yeah. just, we love what we do. So we will go through everything life throws at us just to be able to play music yeah and i think like it's been so rewarding to knowing you put like we ourselves have done the work we did the work on the first album too but it was just creatively you know what i mean but like knowing that you like we've been up trying to do the mixing and the mastering and all this different all this stuff you be you feel so much um more rewarded when we put out like we put out great for yeah. perry the lyric video and 
the response from the fans has been so rewarding because that was like that was the or shall I get to the point that's all in house that's yes, yeah, all in house there's yeah. nothing in-house. yes there's sure. nothing that's from anywhere else but cover drive on that song and um yeah and so like seeing that response and knowing that the fans <laughs> love that song the way that they loved our other songs we put out or mm-hmm. probably even more because they've been part of the journey too that's a huge thing for us like that's mm-hmm. humbling that's Oh, that's just a sweet feeling, man. It just feels And it really feels good. you to go further. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, feel. So now when we're looking at the new tracks out, the obvious question is, when are we getting a cover driver album? Cause you, is it is it done? Yeah, it's, liter- it's literally... Is it? No, is it done? So here is it done. <laughs> it's All not. the songs are there. We just need to finish mixing. Finish mixing. We're in the mixing phase. Yeah. The mixing phase yeah, yeah, but you guys are musicians. Someone may go, okay, wait, hold on. That's, that's why it's taken so long. Yeah, yeah. It actually that is, is why yeah. it's It would have been finished two years ago if we didn't have yeah. that. <laughs> you're precious already with your yeah. music when you're just, when you're going and working with other producers and everything, but when it actually not only comes from you writing-wise, but, but production-wise, and you're in with the mixes and other things, and with the visuals and everything, you become... It's almost like raising a child. Yeah. And it's like, I don't want my kid to go to school yet. I kind of want to snuggle with him a little like, bit. I want to make sure, <laughs> I I wanna make sure he's, or he or she is fully prepared to like enter into the world. And not only that, it's like, we also knew that our fans, we really care about our fans a lot. And we knew that they were waiting for something for us. Mm-hmm. And they've been so loyal and so patient Do you feel for pressure? so long. Do you feel pressure? Yeah, yes. there's a little pressure. And I think for us, it was like, we didn't want to give them just anything. Mm-hmm. We wanted what we gave them to be our very best. Mm-hmm. And um, especially because it was coming from just us. Mm-hmm. We wanted it to be our very best. And that, and we felt like that, that had to take time. We couldn't rush that. And so now we're at a place where we feel like we have gotten our very best together. And um, now we're making the very best best. Yeah. Tweaking it. Yeah, making it the best best of the best best best. 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 <laughs> um, yeah. And so we're just, now we feel like that's what we put out Griffith Perry because... We felt like it was ready. We felt like it was our best, um, and we wanted our fans to hear that. We wanted them. We feel like they deserve that because they have been so so supportive even mm-hmm. after all this time that we've been out of the UK and not releasing music and everything. So 